Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. Uh, in this video we will um, be exploring the workflow on how to create your own um, uh, sheet for your hunting knife. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial please leave a comment, please leave a like, um, please leave a comment with whatever suggestions you may have for a future tutorial I should do. And if you like the content that you see, please subscribe to my channel to get, um, you know, to get other videos showing up in your YouTube feed. So yeah, let's get going. So let's start uh, modeling our uh, sheath for the knife. Uh, for all, for those of you who haven't followed my tutorials yet, uh, basically well, I'm doing a hunting knife and I want to now do a sheath for it. Um, I've, I've went into you know full detail on how to make the high poly and the low poly um, mesh for the knife, and now I'm just going to do as I said the sheath. I'm going to show you a few uh, ways to go about this. So. Uh, basically what I want to do is I want to go in left view or right view it doesn't really matter whichever you want you prefer and then um, you know in my scene explorer for this particular file I've got both my high poly and my uh, low poly knife well, I'm just going to keep the high poly on the screen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my you know to create a new uh, object tab and then I'm going to start with a plane and basically this plane can be whatever you want it to be uh, we'll just put it over there um, I will also want to basically show you a reference that I'm going to use for this um, if you give me one second I'm sure I can find it right so this is the reference that I'm going to use for this uh, sheet um, now the reference is only useful for you know basically um, having an idea of wh where the uh, general shapes are and, and how they're going to, you know, the model and the color and, and so on. Uh, but we, you know, we can have our own design basically made out of this. So I'm just going to put the link in the description below of the actual, you know, link of this particular reference that I'm going to use. So, you know, basically looking at the reference, we want to make sure that the handle of the knife, you know, where the handle of the knife is, we want to have the shape over here of the sheath. And we need to give a bit of uh, thickness to the sheath itself, itself, and then just you know make sure it's curved where the knife handle is, and then it becomes um, you know thinner and thinner as it goes along the blade. So the reason why I started with a plane is because it's going to be a very good starting point for our little project here. So I'm gonna to go to my you know my modified uh, tab in 3ds Max uh, with my plane selected. And I want to start adjusting it a little bit to, um, you know, basically come around this uh, knife shape. So I'm going to add an edit poly on top of this uh, plane. Um, you can do that by also going to modify and list and looking for edit poly, which is over here. And with edit poly active, I'm going to press uh, one on the keyboard to go into vertex mode. And now I can basically start moving these around. Now we are in left view, so that means that whatever I move around the screen uh, will be won't basically skew around and you know left, right, and center. It will just be flat. It will move flat, which which is quite useful for us. So uh, based on the reference that we have, um, you know, I want to start with this shape over here at the handle. Uh, and in order for us to do this, we'll just grab these vertices, and well, actually, we're going to grab everything really and you pressing R on the keyboard we go into scale mode and I just want to basically scale this down a little bit uh, let's just grab um, you know these vertices at the top and bring them uh, downwards like that uh, these two will obviously need to be a bit higher let's also click our high poly knife and alt X on it and then we go to a plane mode and that will basically um, allow us to see through the high polys to see what's happening over there. Uh, one thing to note, which I think is very, you know, very important for you to, to understand this, uh, is that we are seeing a wireframe on the plane that we selected, but we're not seeing a wireframe on the knife. And that is because my shading does not include, my, my shading does not include um, a wireframe or edge faces. What it does is the the option in display selected. I've got this um, display selected with edge faces on, which then means whatever you select will have its wireframe showed. Whatever you have not selected will not have a wireframe, which is very very useful. Right. So now what I want to do is I want to get these two vertices and and basically pull them a little bit like that, 
um, I think I think leaving them around, um, you know, that uh, high over the night is going to be useful since the um, you know the, the sheet won't come won't perfectly fit the knife anyway. So what I want to do is want to start making these shapes over here. Um, again, you, you look at the reference and you can make the adjustments based on what you're seeing in there. Um, I'm going to pull these in like that. Um, yeah, something like that. And we're going to have this curve following around here. Now I want to move these vertices over here, which I think is going to be more, uh, you know, more useful for us. I'm going to bring this inwards a little bit. I'm going to put these around there like that. Okay. Um, these two will move quite high. Oops, sorry. We're going to move quite, um, quite higher than the actual model and then you know looking at our reference here we can see that we've got this sort of uh, area where this is happening so what I want to do is I want to bring these higher maybe or actually I'm gonna go into polygon mode and I'm just gonna start deleting some of these polygons like that um, okay now we're gonna go into vertex mode again by pressing one on the keyboard and let's just bring everything a little bit like that and drag these in like so okay something like that so i think i think this over this overall this this shape is is looking um a bit better so again we're just going to dra drag this in we can bring this vertex over here just try and maintain a you know a, a, as clean of a topology as possible but don't be afraid to break the topology whatever you think is going to be useful for you to do so right so we've done this now I think we've got the general feel of the sheet now we want to see it basically play out and you know see it in action so what we're going to do we're gonna add another modifier which is the um, shell modifier uh, over here and basically if we go into perspective mode now what this does it, it thickens the, um, the shape on both sides uh, another thing that we want to do is let's go into effect hierarchy and effect pivot point only make sure it's centered to object and then deactivate effect pivot point only um, let's press W on the keyboard and basically let's make sure it's actually in the center of the image something like that now seeing it moving I don't know if the knife is um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring both the high poly uh, knife and the uh, low poly knife so as you can see that's where the center of our image is basically the, uh, the center of our of our world is the high poly knife being taken from zbrush is in finding that as being the center because it's pivot point is set over there so we'll go into the pivot point and we'll center it as well Right now we can press and W on the keyboard. We can then right uh, we can right click on these arrows and put the knife in the middle as well. For some reason, the knife low. Oh, see that the pivot point on the knife low is also not centered. Got to be very careful with these. It's very important that you do have them in the center. And now it lines properly. Okay, so we're going to go back to our sheath. Let's have a look. Uh, the sheet is meant to be a bit forward like that. Let's take the knife flow out of the equation. Um, okay, so one thing that we want to do now with our uh, sheet selected, press R on the keyboard and let's scale it outwards. We'll scale it outwards until it fills over, you know, it comes over the knife basically, like so. Right, now let's, um, you know, Alt X on this uh, sheet that we have. I'm just going to select our knife and Alt X on that one so it becomes, um, you know, fully, um, well, opaque basically. Right, so we see our shape now. What we want to do is on top of the shell modifier, let's have an open subdiv modifier. And this is basically what we get. This is the shape that we get which isn't exactly the best looking right now, but that's because our iteration levels is quite low. So I'm going to increase our iterations to something like four. 
and you can see this has mooted out the um, the shape quite a lot as you can see it's the point where even the tip of the knife is coming out now so let's just go in left view again um, between the shell and the open subdiv what we'll do is we'll add an edit poly and now we can control the, uh, the shape so if we press this button over here to show the end result um, then we can basically go into vertex mode select and then we can start dragging yeah so this is actually quite a useful little thing because you can see how you are uh, affecting the shape live and you can make the necessary adjustments to make this sheet follow the reference so you know the, the way you know you look at the angles of the reference and all that and you can basically work out how you want your shape to look like um, so this is all about toying with it um, finding the right result whatever works for you um, okay we can deactivate show end results we can have a better look and for example over here we may want to play with the shape a bit more um, let's just deactivate end result and this is where we have another poly right here okay some um, other things that we want to do is we want to start thicken, thicken the um, you know this whole thing where the the, um, the shape where we've got the handle so for example in this case we can use scale let's show end, end result and let's have a look so we can scale a bit more something like that uh, close show end result and then go into left view again and we basically might want to let me just balance this out a little bit because I don't really like how it's turning up to be something like that so then th this end over here we obviously want to make that like that um, so it, it adheres to the shape a lot better and then we can also pull it down a little bit something like that okay now looking at these um, at these vertices over here where the blade is we'll definitely want to um, thicken those one other thing that we want to do is we want to add a swift loop right over there and basically go into vertex mode and sorry and pull that in as well and then also select these move them across you know you can even scale you can even rotate them a little bit and then bring them upwards and the reason why we're doing this is because we we know that the blade here is is not as big as the uh, tip of this handle so it's I think it's very important that we um, we basically make it match as much as possible something like that we'll just bring this upwards upwards again okay now let's have a look at how our um, shape is holding yeah not too bad you know we've got a, uh, we still got a bit of work to do in this area uh, one of which is to basically make it hollow inside so right in order to make it um, basically to make it hollow uh, what we want to do is we deactivate the end result we'll go into polygon mode select these polygons right over here or maybe maybe like that maybe like so and we're just gonna press delete and basically what happens now uh, if we go into uh, open subdiv again this is basically what we get right but you can see it's it's not exactly the best of results so in edit poly what we'll do is um, we'll basically go to scale mode we'll press shift and keep it pressed and then just drag inwards basically and what that does it basically creates another another one of our models another one <clears throat> another um it makes makes a copy of the of the sheath and it uh, shrinks it down as well so we don't want an open subdiv active on it uh we'll just you know in the scene explorer we now have two of these planes so we want the open subdiv to be deactivated on both and with the second one selected the one that we've created we want to basically we want to balance it out a little bit so one of the things that we want to do uh, make sure you know 
bring it inwards like that, depending on how thick you want to make the, um, you know, make it longer in order for it to match, as you can see over there. Um, you can see how um, inside the shape, how, it's, how it rests inside the shape as well. So, yeah, I'm looking at it now. I'm just trying to, um, let's, let's just let's isolate both of these so we can have a better view. So that's our model over there. We're not really worried what happens in the you know in the middle here. We're worried about what happens here in the front where the uh, where you can clearly see. So we're just going to scale it on the side as well. So that's how thick we're going to create it. Now the magic trick here is to go into poly edit poly mode, uh, go to polygon, select every polygon in there by dragging, and then pressing the flip button over there. And basically now you can see inside the, the cavity, right? Now, so what I see over here, which I'm not really happy with, is how some of these shapes are, are showing. But anyway, let's just uh, do a, let's just do a welding here to have a look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my uh, main sheath and in the edit poly um, modifier, we'll go to attach and we'll press the uh, other, uh, you know, the second uh, mesh. Now we're going to edge mode, select edges and press bridge up here. So you can do this basically for all of them. Um, I've got a keyboard shortcut to um, to do my my bridging. So, you know, I would suggest you guys do the same, create uh, keyboard shortcuts for things like uh, like bridging. Okay, that's bridged, that's bridged, that's fine. That's bridged, bridged. And now we've just got these two over here and we've bridged them as well. Right, so now let's activate open subdiv again and have a look how that looks like. And this is basically our result. Uh, we do have a problem over here, and that's because we haven't bridged something. So you see all the all the problems clearly come out um, when you go to open something, when you go to your final sort of version of the mesh. So this is basically what we have, right? Now, some of the things that you may want to do, just like in the reference uh, that we have, you may want to create a, cl a clearer sort of um, outline of the knife handle. So you can easily do that by using some creases, basically. So for example, I'm just gonna alt text, go into left left, uh, left view. Some of the things that we want to do, go to a poly of the plane, uh, go to edge mode, and first of all, let's drag this in a little bit more. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. And then select these edges and move them like that, right? And the reason for that is I don't want this tip to come out. Now we clearly have an edge over here, right? Um, so what we could do, we could add a crease set between, go to edge mode, select these edges, for example, these edges, that edge as well. And then we can create the set and increase to the maximum just to have a look how, that's, how that will pan out. So if I go to open subdiv, this is basically what we get, right? If I go to shading and deactivate the display selected, this is basically what I get. Now we do have a problem over here and that is because we need to basically crease these as well. So we're just going to update the set. And now when we go to open subdiv, we're gonna have a better shape, right? So you can see that, you can see the shape, how it's forming. Um, some other things to do, um, you know, for example, over here, it sort of abruptly ends and that's because it's not, doesn't have anything to connect to. So you could potentially um, select these two as well and update the update the set and then you can see how that shape holds up a lot better right now we'll go back into edit poly let's have a look from the left view again um, so left view deactivate show end result and what I'm thinking is we'll have to 
sorry, not the wire. Uh, Wendy, the wireframe by mistake. <laughs> um, what we want to do is we want to display the selected width edges again. So we want to select these and these edges and these edges. Go back into the into the perspective. Uh, go to end result, and we we'll want to bring this closer. Just so it just so it can it can fit a bit better on the knife. Now this opening has to be wider than anything else. So you know we're gonna go into um, we're going to deactivate our open subdiv and we're going to bring these closer in as well make sure all the edges are selected uh, show end result and then let's just scale to a certain degree like so uh, over here we may want to bring this a bit higher Something like that. Another thing that we want to do, we may want to do, is we want to create a, a crease on the um, on the top as well. So what I mean by that is, we go into edge mode, we select some of these edges like that, and then we'll create another crease. Let's show end result. And let's increase it a little bit just to see how that shape you know this is how it's completely flat and this is how it brings it up a little bit more right so let's go into open subdiv and have a look i think that looks a lot better already right so what i'm thinking is this is out this is perfect for our um for our sheath so i think this looks quite quite okay uh let's just change its color uh, gray so we can have a better view of it okay you can add some more creases if you want you know in certain areas again looking over here you can probably work out where where some of the where, where you may want some more sort of iterations as like, you can see over here the this part of the leather is what is, is you know it's actually a bit um falling to the side than the other one uh we can do that as well but that will mean to not have some very symmetrical nature of the shape but it really shouldn't be a problem so we're going to go into edit poly go into um, uh, vertex mode um, de deactivate show end results and we'll just take this part and this part and just bring it a bit lower maybe that part as well now let's go into open subdiv and let's have a look so that has brought it down a little bit, as you can see. Okay, a bit of misalignment, you know, so, so it helps the shape. Uh, looking at the uh, shape, I've, I would have liked a better curve. So what I mean by that is we can potentially decrease this a little bit and maybe this one as well. Yeah. I think I think that's gonna go work out okay but maybe the whole thing over here is a bit too harsh something like that okay so now we just well you know if we want to add some more detailed geometry to it now is the time to basically do it so to add some uh, details we could probably go for um, well, uh, basically a strap over here to stop the knife from coming out. Uh, at, th at this stage, you may want to play a bit more with this shape over here to get this gap even clo closer or make these walls a bit thicker if you want to, but I'm just going to keep it that way. So basically to make the strap, what we'll need is we'll need the cylinder. Um, just a very small cylinder. Let's just make sure the cylinder is in the middle of the scene. Right, and now I'm just gonna bring it over here. Let's press F4 to see the uh, wireframe of it. I don't, on my cylinder, I don't really need any height segments, so that should be enough. Let's just scale it down, something like that. Um, sides, I'm gonna say something like, yeah, we'll just leave it to 18. Okay, so basically, 
let's just deactivate edge faces and just display selected width uh, edges. Um, what we want to do now is we want to make sure that our our um, uh, basically our button for for the strap is actually you know ready to be used. So I'm just going to add another poly on top. Go to polygon mode and so and delete both of these polygons. Uh, we'll then go into border mode. And with the border, more, border mode, mode selected, go to edge mode, keep alt pressed and deselect edges on both sides like that. And then just press uh, bridge. And then go to, you're in edge mode anyway, so select this edge and then just press ring. And then press the connect button, which will then add this vertex across. Go to border mode, number three on the keyboard, select these two open spaces and then just press cap and that's it and basically we'll just repeat the same thing for for this side um, so again you know border mode edge mode and so on select connect <laughs> bridge um, this is actually quite a nice trick to basically make uh, you know quads on a on a circle uh, on a cylinder sorry um, Okay, well, what is that cap button? Right, okay, so that should be it for our cylinder. Um, now I want to basically position it, so I'm just going to rotate it, make sure you've got the angle snaps active. So rotate it to um, 90 degrees. Sorry, I have bore, bore mode active, and this is why it's not rotating. Right, so 90, 90 degrees, not 95. Okay, now let's move it into place uh, depending on where we want to, to, to place it. So I'm thinking the best, the best place for this would be somewhere around here. We're obviously going to have to scale it down a bit. So what I'm thinking is the strap goes. So it just comes out from here. Yeah like so and basically we'll just duplicate this and we'll want it to be somewhere around here maybe rotated at 45 degrees or something like that doesn't really matter because because when we're going to going to add the strap itself that's when you know we'll we'll um, change the details so now we just want to add a bit of geometry for the strap itself so in order for us to add the uh, strap, let's um, go in here and create a plane again. And we'll do something like that. Okay. Don't change anything to the plane as of yet. It's actually quite good that it has a few um, edges in there. So we'll move it over here. Let's then rotate the plane by 90 degrees, rotate it again by 90 degrees. And I want to position it where this part is here. Obviously, our plane is going to have to be a bit uh, thicker than the actual uh, caps or button or whatever keeps it there. So we'll do something like that. We're just going to scale it down a little bit. So now I want to go into the modifier list. Let's add a few more uh, length segments, maybe eight um, and then all I want to do is let's add the bend modifier to it and now we can basically uh, play with some of these so we're just going to have to work out so that's not the angle that I want That's not at all the angle that I want. This is not what we want. Uh, it's going to be a bit tricky. Um, it's the direction basically that dic dic dictates where all of this, where the bend is going. So we want something like that. And then we want to rotate. See, I've got too much of a bend. 
right, something like that. Let's just pull it in there, go a bit higher. Yeah. Now we obviously need to make it a bit bigger. That should be okay. Okay, now let's do some more. Well, actually, we don't need to do any more bending necessarily. Uh, we'll just add another poly on top. We'll go into edge mode and we'll start playing a little bit with our own sort of manual bl uh, bending tools. And for some reason, yeah. Okay, drag it in like so. Like that. Something like that. Okay. So now let's just um, get out of uh, edge mode and let's get our own sort of caps in here as well. And I just want to position it. So we're just going to have to rotate it based on the strap. And let's just bring it inwards like that. Now we're going to go back to our um, to our strap, uh, our leather strap, and we're going to add a shell modifier to it. obviously this is way too much and actually we don't need any any outer amount we just need an inner amount like so uh, we want to add another bend to it and with this bend let's just go back to the y-axis and for some reason yeah okay so we've got this angle Something like that. Pull it out a little bit. Yeah. Now we're going to select our cylinders. Uh, pull this one out. We just want to position them basically to make sure they fit with the strap. Again, bring it upwards. And bend move to the side and that should be it for now right okay um, to, to this overall leather strap if we want to basically make it a bit you know look a bit more uh, realistic we can add an open subdiv which basically will do will, will, um, this is what's going to happen to the sides can just increase some of the iterations um, and then you know, between the bend and the and and that we can add another poly and basically select some of these polygons um, pull them in maybe you know try and create a bit of um, a bit of change in the shape so now if we go to open subdiv this is how it will look like Something like that, yeah. Very, very fast and very simple. We don't want to overcomplicate things. If you want, you know, we will do some detailing on this anyway in ZBrush. But basically, this is how we're, this is this is the quality of the mesh that we're going to have for now. Um, one of the things that we want to do now is want to do some naming conventions. Basically, if we uh, want to modify some of these individually, so for example, cylinder one. We'll call this uh, caps underline two, and then cylinder the cylinder cap underline one. Um, this plane we're going to call this this the sheath, and then this other plane we're going to we're going to call it strap. 
So when we uh, when we export these into ZBrush, we can basically um, work on them individually, and that's going to be of a great you know a great help to do. So this is basically it for the uh, sheath um, low poly to high poly um, geometry, you know, um, in 3ds Max. I hope this is basically helps you uh, on how to work out a, a sheath for a knife, for a sword, for anything else. I mean, you can you can really really develop these. You can you can really make them very, very complicated. This was meant to just introduce you to uh, a technique in, in which to do it. And an open subdiv for me is the way to go, definitely. Far better, far more economical than Turbo Smooth is. Uh, you know, they don't have to, uh, uh, you don't have to add all these crazy loops and then just work out where it's all going wrong. Open subdiv is quite straightforward and you can easily see how you can make creases and nice shapes and, you, you know, for when you export it into ZBrush, it's going to be so much easier to follow that and create new patterns and so on. Um, so I hope you guys found this um, this um, uh, useful. If you, if you did, please subscribe, please like the video, uh, uh, press the uh, ring notification bell uh, down there so you know when I'm going to upload a new video, as my next video is going to be detailing in ZBrush of the, of the sheath, and then my next video on all of that is going to be painting the knife and the sheath itself and fi basically finalizing the product. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and, uh, and learned something. Um, if you have any more suggestions as to what to make a tutorial on next, please let me know and uh, thank you for watching. Uh, see ya.